I say do it right here. I mean, you're a person that believes that we can build a nation in America, that we somehow, A, can evict people from certain states and take the states over, or B, we can buy enough property in the ghetto or anywhere else that uh, has available property and build our own communities. We can take entire swaths, entire blocks. We can take entire areas, and we have the money, we have the know-how, we have the people, and we're going to do that in America. You might think that we also can, uh, what's it called, take islands. There may be some islands that you may think that we can get. If you fall into this category and you think that we can, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let, let, let me, uh, let me catch all the other ones. You may think that uh, by filing paperwork, by suing the government, by going to court system, that we can claim sovereignty here. You may think that we have a case and that in arguing this case that those, who uh, control the judicial, the judicial system will recognize your paperwork, recognize the treaties that you are, uh, what's called, that you use politically, um, that you can sue for government and things like that. You know, that's another aspect of doing it right here. And you may think that doing it elsewhere is asinine because you believe that we are from here, we are the original Aboriginal people, you know, we are connected to the Indians. Blah, 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 blah. This is what you may think. Um, I'm not clowning that. I'm just saying this is the camp that you fall in. However, on the other side, then you have those who are nationalists. Um, many people say it, it is only Pan-Africanist. However, a nationalist is a person that simply wants a independent nation off the shores of America. If you happen to say Africa, then you do. If you may think it may be someplace else, you, you do. We at the BAIO, we choose Africa for the place that we want to place our nation for a number of reasons. However, this is who we are. We are the people who want an independent con continent off the shores of America. That's the foundation of it. The actual location, the actual location of it is a secondary to me topic to the first topic and the first idea, which is the happy continent off the shores of America. I have to say that like a thousand times because some of you knuckleheads, you don't get this. And so these are the two camps that we have today. And instead of being complementary, instead of working together, instead of respecting each other's right to want to do what we need to do, for whatever reason, the do it right here camp, or not only is the do it, do it right here camp in opposition to those of us who want a, 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 a continent or a nation state off the shores of America, but you have become angry. You have become adversarial. You have become petty. You have become slanderous, and you have taken indirect shots or sometimes direct shots. First of all, let me ask you, brothers and sisters, let me ask you something. Is your money on the – is your, your face and your family's face on the money in this country? Is your name on the dollar, the $2 bill? The hundred dollar bill, the fifty dollar bill. Mount Rushmore, which is known to have, you know, some of the greatest seasons in America. Is there a black face on Mount Rushmore? Cause I, I, I haven't checked that. Is there a black face on Mount Rushmore? Brothers and sisters, is there a black not business, not storefront, not barbershop? Is there a black business? Is there black corporations? in America, that have lasted for 300 years. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. 200 years. 100 years. See, you, brothers and sisters, who talk this do-it-right-here stuff, you are suffering from something that you don't even realize what you're suffering from. And it's a two-part suffering that you're, you're partaking in. The first part of your suffering is, is that you are so locked in on doing whatever you think that you need to do right here that you can't even tolerate somebody else's point of view. You can't even tolerate somebody else's efforts to do what they're doing. I remember years ago, there's a brother who we are friends with, the BAIO, but he has a little bit of an adversarial existence with us. But either way, he said something and I respect it. He said, look, <clears throat> I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not leaving America. He said, but if you brothers want to do that, he said, I'll check on y'all. I'll check to see how you're doing. And if you have, uh, have done something, I'll support it. See, I can respect that. 
What I can't respect is all this stupid YouTube side shots that being taken and all of these Facebook posts by do it right here, guy, and do it right there, girl, because the reality of the situation is is your maniacal connection and obsession with doing something in America, to me, is a mental disorder. You are bipolar. In one breath, you say you want to leave. In one breath, you say you want to disconnect from the oppressor. In some breath, you say some of you say you hate the oppressor, even as you want to kill the oppressor. In the next breath, you call us crazy, you call us lazy, and you call us um, insane for wanting to take our skills, our people, our labor, our families elsewhere and try our best to do it on our own. How in the hell is that crazy? How are we lazy for wanting to do that? And how are we punks for wanting to do that? So fast forward years later, 2007, 2008, 2009, I'm out there going to other cities, knocking on doors, trying to wake people up, having all these venues. I'm starting to get worn down. I'm really starting to get worn down because I'm seeing that no matter what we do, there's an ebb and there's a flow. There's a rise and there's a fall. And there's really no long-term commitment by black people to this nation-building idea that we have, that we can really do it right here. There's no black people who really believe in this. I mean, there's a couple of us who are what we used to call formal believers or diamonds or whatever, but the reality of it is, is that most black people will participate for a short period of time but then they realized that they had a lack of resources, and because our organization couldn't deploy them, and when I say employ brothers and sisters, I'm not saying pay them some little, you know, I, I know a sister who used to teach at a university for $60 a month. You put that in your, in your hat, $60 a month. And so, therefore, what used to happen is, is that, you know, these brothers and sisters, because the organization couldn't employ them and give them gainful employment enough to take care of their families, eventually they'd be a part of the, the organization. They would phase out and go back into society. And we would be bitter and angry and have hot sauce in our mouth against them. We'd be like, yo, these people are hypocrites, disbelievers, they're punks, they're scared. All the stuff that you're saying about us right now, everything that you do it right here people are saying about us is the same goddamn thing that we were saying about people when we were trying to do it right here. And you know what ended up happening? We ended up getting worn down because the reality of it is you're not going to build a nation in this country. You're not going to build a nation in this country. A, if you're calling yourself a nation in America, you're not that. You're lying to yourself and the people. B, you will never build no nation in this country. You should know that. And that Oregon situation should tell you that. But you know something? Maybe you guys need a little bit more convincing. So hang on with me, and we're going to get to the business of convincing. We'll be back. We want to be able to control our infrastructure. Because if you are to say that you have a host country, a host nation, or whatever, many people say they have a nation. You say you have a nation of Israel. You say you have a nation, you know, of uh, um, the uh, the Nawabian nation. You say you have the Moorish nation. You know, everybody says that they have a nation. But in order for you to be respected as a nation, you have to have, first of all, a modern infrastructure, and second of all, you have to have control of your infrastructure. Do you understand are you starting to understand what I'm saying now, brothers and sisters? Are you starting to really understand what BAIO stands for? I think that we are arguing or, or getting to the point now where we are getting away from the core ideology. And my purpose of this show, I don't need no notes. I don't need no facts and figures. I don't need none of that other stuff. I just need to have the pure core ideology in my heart and be able to be sincere enough to articulate it because, quite frankly, I think that a lot of us have forgotten what the core is. You, brothers and sisters, are forgetting what the core is. You are forgetting the heart of BAIO philosophy, and these squabbles that we're having have nothing to do with that. The core philosophy, the unifying principle. Listen, I come from the Nation of Islam walk of life. Some of you may come from the Christian walk of life. Some of you may come from the Afrocentric walk of life. Some of you may come from the Hebrew walk of life. I don't really care what walk of life you come from. The unifying principle is infrastructure. Infrastructure being that which is the bare bones, the foundation of the running of the country, and that is the electrical uh, system, the sewage system, the plumbing, the plumbing system, the information system, roads and highways. Um, airports and seaports, these are hard infrastructure things that you need to run in society. 
you know damn well if you, it doesn't matter how many blocks you buy in America, it doesn't no matter how, me, how much area that you control in America, you will never control your own infrastructure. Never. You will have to go down and fill out some forms, and you will have to connect your power from somebody, uh, uh, you know, the local power company that is controlled by the government. You will have to go and fill out forms, and you will have to turn on your water and begin to pay for your water controlled by the local government. You will have to make sure that your information is now patched in and piped in. Guess what? That will be controlled by the government. So, therefore, the reason why we understand that it is absolutely, totally necessary to have infrastructure off the shores of America because when you say that you want to be independent, you cannot be independent if you still got to go file forms and get these services done by your enemy. Period. It's just that simple. No ifs, no ands, no but, no suppose. And so, therefore, Infrastructure is what united all of us because that trumps religion. It trumps ideology. It trumps biases. It trumps prejudices. It trumps discrimination because at the end of the day, I don't give a damn who you are or what you do. If you could contribute to the running of a nation's infrastructure, to me, this is what you need, you know, this is what, what, what we need to unite on. See, the problem with unity with black people today is that we don't have a common denominator that we can unite on. We have said that the common denominator that we should unite on is that we want to see our people free. Various people have, have, have you know, black people have various different reasons or various different visions or understandings of what exactly is freedom. Some think freedom is spiritual freedom. Freedom practice whatever religion you want to practice. Some think freedom is economic freedom. Freedom to, you know, basically... Uh, conduct business and trade in whichever way that you want to. Some think that uh, freedom is political freedom, freedom to put your own officials into office and they then make the laws and policies of the land of the guy that you say is your enemy. And so, therefore, we at the BIO, we, the freedom that we're talking about as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know in my heart of hearts, the freedom that we're talking about is the freedom that trumps everything else because the freedom that we're talking about is freedom of infrastructure. Do you understand what I mean? Freedom of infrastructure. Freedom to now control that which runs your nation and is the backbone and lifeblood of your nation, period. Quite frankly, every black organization was brought down by infrastructure. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Have you ever really thought about that? Every black organization was brought down by infrastructure. And the reason being is this. All they have to do is pull the strings on your infrastructure, and it doesn't matter how much property you acquired. It doesn't matter how much, um, what's called, how much space that you occupy. It doesn't matter how much you legally do. They can always pull the rug from under you by controlling your infrastructure. And so, therefore, they can, you know, basically trump up tax liens on your properties. They can, um, what you call it, they can cut off water to your properties. The Flint, Michigan uh, situation should let you know that even the water is not safe. And if they want to poison you through the water, basically what are you going to do? You are, you are screwed. And the reason why you're screwed is because water is part of the infrastructure system. Those brothers and sisters who are in Flint that are poisoned and, and, and being terrorized by that system, that is an infrastructure problem. It is white people using infrastructure against you. And you need to understand that. All of this, these videos, these stupid videos that you guys keep making about if you want to go back to Africa, these people don't like you, and, uh, you know, you can't, you know, how are you going to make money over there, and you ain't got the same customs, and you ain't going to marry their daughter. Nigga, you think we're going back to Africa to marry somebody's daughter? That's what you think this whole thing is about? I mean, come on. That is the best you can do. The best you can do is to say that the reason why you should not want to establish a continent on, on, on a nation state on the continent of your ancestors is because they won't let you marry their daughters. How stupid we are in 2016. Do you know how idiotic that sounds? Did you ever check about, did you, did, you, did you bring out your idiotic scale and see what side it comes out on when you said that statement? Because I'm pretty sure you're down low. In 
the low fives with this bad boy. Because it doesn't make no damn sense to me. It really doesn't. And the reality of the situation is we all know that money and resource talks and BS walks. And, and I say again, we all know that money and resource talks and BS walks. And so, therefore, anybody will give us what we need if we have enough money and resource to get it because that's what everybody else is doing. And so, therefore, before I take the break, let me just talk about nationhood for a second. Because nationhood is something that I think that is the key that, to me, for all you Negroes making videos about us, because you, you, you're talking about us. You ain't talking about nobody else. There's nobody else that's really that serious about establishing a continent, uh, excuse me, a nation state on the continent of our ancestors like the BAIO. So when you're making videos about it and you put your fingers up and you say, quote, unquote, nation building, and you talk about building on the continent, you're talking about us. We understand that. I know that. I don't even take it personal anymore. But to me, I guess the Trump, you know, because we done talked about infrastructure and, and you are not intellectually capable of, of grasping that. I, I can understand that. You Negroes that make these videos, you are, listen, you are so intellectually deficient, you have no idea how to grasp that freedom comes from controlling your own. You, you can't even grasp that. So there's no reason for us to even address that anymore. The only thing we can do is talk about how we're going to control it for people who down with us. But as far as talking to you Negroes, like, you haven't even got off the land part yet. So how the hell are you even going to deal with it? Either way. So let's, but to me, the trump card for y'all is nationhood. The trump card for y'all is nationhood. Nationality and nationhood is two different things. I want to say that again. I've said it before, but I don't think you got that. Nationality and nationhood is two different things. It's two different things. Just like in our lessons, we talk about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You have land, infrastructure, and without those two, you cannot have nationhood. Do you understand? Do you understand that the two make up the one? Do you understand that land and infrastructure make up nationhood? Do you understand that you cannot have nationhood unless you have land and infrastructure? You see, these three words, I don't even know if when these brothers came up with these words, they understood how freaking profound it is. I don't even know if they understood how profound it is. When you really start getting into the, pr the true core of what land infrastructure nationhood is, then you really understand that this is destiny, B. This is not something that, 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 that just, you know, you can hop in and hop out on and we could talk about and get disgruntled with or whatever. Land infrastructure nationhood is destiny. And if you have come to the realization that this is where we need to go, even though you're a part of a black movement or you're by yourself, then let me tell you something. You were meant to be a part of this, and we need to iron all of this BS out because there's a lot more work to do than we're doing right now. Pretty much, um... That's pretty much you, you do it right here, people. Like, you know everything. You do. You have it figured out. Like, you have a comprehensive plan to do it right here. And the funny thing about your comprehensive plan to do it right here is you did not factor the fact that your infrastructure is controlled by somebody else and nobody, you mean, like, does it make sense for somebody to leave a state? Leave the power grid. Leave the railway system. Leave the, I mean, does that make sense for them to leave all of that to you simply because you want a court bell? Does that make sense to you? Like, I, 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 listen, this is what I mean. Like, when I put this title out, I know a lot of you thought that I was going to, you know, I was just joking. I really believe you have a mental disorder. I do. I really believe you have a mental disorder. I believe that you are incapable of realizing how absurd what you're talking about. It, it doesn't make any sense. And because of that, it's causing an impaired relationship between us and you because we are simply your brothers and sisters. We are simply trying to help. All we want to do is end this. That's all we want to do. When we ask what the end game is and we say that the end game is land, infrastructure, and nationhood, we mean that. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you a better tomorrow. And when we say that we're trying to give you a better tomorrow, that means that when we have an independent nation in which we control, you mean like, brother, sister, you could point to corrupt African nations until you blew in the face. You can. First of all, BAIO is not trying to go be a part of, of Nigeria. Let's get that out the way. <clears throat> BAIO is not going to be a part of, uh, of Uganda. 
Let's get that out of the way. BAIO is not trying to, to, to uh, what you call it, bring a host nation and put it inside Ghana. We are trying to go and get territory that is unclaimed and unused. And listen, brothers and sisters, you don't think the whole Africa is claimed by now, do you? As huge as that country is, you don't think that every square inch of that country is taken? Is that what you think? Because if that's what you think, then you really got a mental disorder. You're a nationalist, go see Fifth Wave. If you're conscious, go see Fifth Wave, please. That is, to me, one of the most important movies of 2016, if you're going to look at things in the abstract or in the metaphor, metaphorically. In this movie, Fifth Wave, it's an alien invasion. They call them the others. You never really see who the aliens are, by the way. And first, a big mothership comes into the space, you know, the usual situation. And the first thing that happens is, the first thing that happens is an EMP burst hits the whole planet. Everything that runs on electricity or magnetism goes out. No cell phones, no car, uh, airplanes start falling out of the sky, all of that. That's, brothers and sisters, that's infrastructure. That's infrastructure. And if somebody controls your infrastructure, you are basically screwed. Because without power, without any of that stuff, you're back in the Stone Ages. Those people were back in the Stone Ages. You saw cars in the streets. You saw buildings crumbling. You saw all of that. The second wave basically was natural disasters. I don't know how they did it, but they started causing earthquakes, um, all sorts of uh, tsunamis and things like that. This started washing out the people. But the third thing was biological warfare. So they infected mosquitoes. And they gave, not mosquitoes, excuse me, they infected birds, and they gave the birds like an elevated form of the, of the bird flu. And it basically killed, I want to say, like 80% of the population. The only thing that was left was like a small 10% of the population. And what they did with the fourth wave was they killed all of the adults, and they took the children, and they retrained the children to now look at anybody that was a survivor as the enemy and set the children to kill the adults. Does this sound familiar to you? Does this sound familiar to you? This is, this is fifth wave. This is how Hollywood would be putting the truth right in your face. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, infrastructure, when you look at the Flint situation, Flint, Michigan situation, the water supply is infrastructure. And warfare, in, in many cases, the greatest or the height of warfare is to be able to defeat your enemy without taking one shot throwing one blow or uh, what you call wasting one arrow. It's the ability to uh, defeat your enemy with sometimes movement. It's the ability to defeat your enemy by seizing their power supply, by seizing their, um, their food stores and things like that. Basically, if you can move on the enemy's logistics, a lot of times you can defeat the enemy. Napoleon was good at this. Stonewall Jackson was good at this. William Tecumseh Sherman was good at this. Sun Tzu wrote uh, uh, he wrote in such fashion that that is what you should do. And many other Chinese writers and African uh, generals, this is what they did. Hannibal was extremely good at moving on your infrastructure. He understood that. And so the thing about it is this, brothers and sisters, when you look at this Flint situation, you got a lot of people in Flint, that, 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 that not Flint, but in Detroit and Michigan, that claim to be this and claim to be that. But they are irrelevant now because this attack Blew past all of their rhetoric, blew past all of their killings, uh, excuse me, uh, their, their yellings and threatening, and it went straight to what they could not control, which is infrastructure. This is why I said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't care what any of you come on YouTube and say about us. I don't care what you say on, on the Internet or blog talk or whatever. You don't have a nation if you don't control infrastructure. That Flint situation should tell you that. Not only did they, they didn't cut off the water supply to the people. They just poisoned the water supply. And not only is it now affecting the adults, but it's affecting the babies. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Again, I got five children. So for me, it's kind of hard to even think about my child now growing up with brain damage and body damage from lead poisoning that I could not control. Now, mind you, my children don't drink water anyway. They don't drink water from the tap. They drink it from the bottle. And I'm not saying that the bottle um, water that you get is any better, but it's damn sure better than tap water because tap water has fluoride in it and said other things like that. So if you're listening out there and you got children, you should know from this situation now, do not let your children drink tap water ever. I don't give a damn what city you're in. 
Don't let your children drink tap water. But that that really doesn't matter because even if you bathe with the water, it still gets in your skin. And so, therefore, brothers and sisters, what we're saying to you and what we're proposing to you from the BAIO is very simple. When we say land, infrastructure, and nationhood, infrastructure has a capital, maybe even a triple or quadruple capital I. And the reason being is, is that you cannot fight any fight, you cannot prosecute, you cannot defend yourself against any oppressor if you don't control the infrastructure. Understand something. When you're going to a Middle Eastern country to fight a war, and you're fighting against uh, what's called, quote, unquote, insurgents, do you understand that that's their infrastructure? Do you understand that America is taking over their infrastructure, but they can never really control the infrastructure because it's not theirs? Do you understand that they've been over there for so many years because they can't control their infrastructure? Do you understand that? Do you understand that? That's what's not being said on TV. That's what not, what's not being said on the news outlets is that the war really is going to drag on because it's a foreign country and you never can really control their infrastructure. So when we say that word, we're not talking about something transient that you hear on TV or you read in a book. We're talking about the bare bones of a city, of a state, and of a nation. And that bare bones is, again, your power, your information, your sewage system, your railways, your transportation, your air traffic, and all of the rest of the things that keep a nation going, keep people, resources, power, and information coming in. And going out. And if you can control that, then you can defeat the enemy. But if you can't control that, then you yourself will be defeated a thousand times. We'll be back. Actually, uh, we won't be back because we're running out of time here. <laughs> so I want to give everybody five minutes. So let me start from the top and work my way down to the bottom. And I know who this is. Call it from the 347. It's my dear brother, my brother from another mother who I love, like 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 <laughs> like my own brother, Mr. Holipsism. How are you, big Peace, brother? Peace, fam. How you doing? Fantastic, big brother. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I made me some soup, roasted vegetable. Doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually eating bean soup while I'm doing this show myself. <laughs> yeah, soup is the deal, man, especially when it's cold like this. But, yeah, man, um, pretty much this is the exclamation point on the whole situation right here, this show you're doing. Yes, like, sir. We don't really have to explain ourselves anymore. All we have to go, when somebody says something, we'll just say, see Flint, Michigan. Right. <laughs> right. You know, that's all we really have to do. I mean, you, you, you really just put the, the period, the exclamation point, and everything else on this whole entire discussion. It, think about this. These people... Now all these conspiracy theories are coming up. Oh, they're trying to eradicate the black race and da da da. No, it has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with is people is making money and making moves, and you are not uh -huh. a factor. Uh -huh. You're not that important. Nobody right. went on. Nobody made a decision at a, at a, at a smoke in a smoke filled room and said, "You know what? We're going to kill the people of Detroit." Right. These people cutting deals with, with, with water companies and whatever, and they just said, you know what, let's, in the interim, let's just draw the water from the um, lake, from the river, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't have to filter it. It's just, you know, whatever. We'll just do it as an interim thing. But they didn't realize just how bad it was. Right. Right. You know, because remember, this is government officials doing this. The last thing a government mm -hmm. official wants is to be on the front pages of the news. Right. So it wasn't like this was an Indeed. intentional thing. It was just a, a neglectful thing. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. And now all of these black power Americans, mm -hmm. what's your solution? Are you going to go and redirect the water? <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and wait for white people to do it for you. And isn't this what I've been saying for the longest? But you see, I'm glad that things like this happen. There's a silver lining in this. I'm sad for the people of Detroit, obviously. But the silver lining in this is that maybe it will make everybody understand what the hell we have been talking about all this time. Yes. Because if, if there's anybody who's trying to challenge us after this situation, then you people out there have to realize who's for real and who's on some BS. Uh -huh. And it ain't us. No doubt. No doubt. Because we called no doubt. this. 